Cemetery Stories is a program partnership between the Humanities Council and Historic Fairview Cemetery. Historic Fairview is um, located in Albuquerque. It is Albuquerque's oldest cemetery, uh, incorporated in 1881. And there is just so much rich Albuquerque specific and also New Mexico specific history here. I'm Bethany Tabor. I am a program officer at the New Mexico Humanities Council. Cemetery Stories is a story slam that gathers around members of the community from Albuquerque and around New Mexico. It highlights the history of Albuquerque with an oral history walking tour, and it also allows community members to take to the main stage and express their stories and experiences with loss, grieving, memorial, death and dying. And it's designed to draw people together in the cemetery to reinvigorate life into the cemetery and uh, acknowledge the universal experience that we all have as humans. Hello, I am Reverend Thomas Harwood, pioneer pastor and educator in New Mexico, and formerly the chaplain of the 25th Wisconsin Volunteers. I joined early on as a way of fighting the Southern Rebellion and finally, once and for all, freeing the slaves. Well, when the war finally ended, I came home. I had met Emily before that. We were able to, to finally be together after all that time. This is the Harwood plot where Emily and I both rest now. In 1866, the United States Army formed the 9th and 10th Cavalry and the 24th and 25th Infantry Regiments. Those units' mission would be to help settle Western towns, protect trade routes, wagon trains, and railroad. Grave sites of 14 Buffalo soldiers have been identified here at Historic Fairview Cemetery. I'm a proud member of the National Association of Buffalo Soldiers and Troopers Motorcycle Club. Our club's mission is to ensure that the contribution of these soldiers are not forgotten and that their sacrifices are honored along with those of all soldiers of that era. So I wrote a book called Haunted Albuquerque and this place is in it. So hauntings are basically elements of the past that repeat. Then you have the bystander type. One of the other ones is called Psy Phenomenon. It used to be called Poltergeist Cases. I've never actually caught anything in here. But then again, we haven't really come in here at night. There's been some stuff that make, okay, hmm. But yeah, it's just fascinating getting into the history of a lot of ghost stories. It took me many years to realize that all of the positive aspects of my life, such as they are, were gifts given to me by my mom. Her last months were very difficult for her as she suffered from an incurable condition that caused her a great deal of pain. On a Sunday in April of 2003, I went to visit my mom. Now, once again, she told me that she wanted to die. For the very first time, I heard the sincerity and seriousness in her voice. And I told her it was okay, that when she was ready, she should go. Of course, her concern was not for herself, but for me. And she told me that I don't want to interfere with your plans. I told her, don't worry about my plans, I'll be fine. Whenever you're ready to go, you should just go. Three days later, I got a call. My mom had slipped into a coma, so I immediately went to see her. For a bit over an hour, I held her hand and I talked about familiar things, shared thoughts about our path together. Surprisingly, just holding her hand and talking to her I didn't feel sad. I felt my mom had finally found the peace and contentment for which she had long been searching. When I realized it was time to let her go, I told her that I loved her and said my last goodbye. Within an hour of my leaving, she just simply slipped away. Throughout my life, my mom and I exchanged many gifts, starting with her giving me the gift of life. She gave me many gifts, however, that were not so obvious, including the, the valuable gifts of the, of the many values that were integral to her being. On that last day, we completed our final gift exchange. My mom gave me the gift of allowing me to, allowing me time to, to be by her side and say goodbye. And I gave my mom the gift of permission to let go of life. 
In the spring of 2015, I decided to go and be with my father in the place where his spirit shined. He had Parkinson's, and then he admitted to me that second spring that I was with him in Argentina and Buenos Aires. He said, I've got to go back to the States because I've got to get my white blood count done because I've got leukemia and it might go up. It was three days before he died, three days, and we had all the family had come. He wanted us to lift him up and that he was going to walk. He was going to do it. So we tried, but his weight was so great that he crumbled under his weight. And at that point was the first point I'd ever seen my father surrender. And he went into a deep coma, into a deep sleep for several days. We held his hand and we were there, but then it was his final breath. And he gave this ah, final breath of leaving the body. And at that point, as I can see him, he's finally that gaucho, that cowboy that's riding the plains Las Pampas, the Argentina, and he was riding forward, no reins holding him back, fearless, free. And I just whispered ever so slightly, you did it. You finally did it. You're free. Thank you. My grandfather died when I was 11 years old of lung cancer. I had never seen a corpse before. I reached out and I touched his icy cold hand and I burst into tears. I totally burst into tears. Decades passed and I avoided death. I avoided funerals. I avoided cemeteries like the plague. In the early 90s, I decided I would make a surrogate amend to a dear friend of mine. His name was John and he was dying of AIDS. My commitment was, I'll be there for you in whatever way I can. And sometimes he was with us, and sometimes he was not. All I can do is just be here for John. Just really be here. That's it. The day of his funeral, we had to convince a Cuban mortuary to take his body. They brought down John from the refrigerator in a box. I didn't know what was going on until I felt the heat from the crematory and the gaping metal grate opened and we stood there and we pushed John's body in the box. I realized this life is impermanent. If you're born, you're going to die. It was a profound moment in my life. I was no longer afraid of death. Do not give up an opportunity to really, really be there for someone that you love when they're dying. It will change your life. Thank you. The whole living construct is so huge that it swallows death. I'll never be out of this construct and the hinge that it all hangs on. Thank you, guys.